Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on multi-scale 2D and 3D investigations of lithium-ion battery electrode. My name is Rena Samsu, marketing at Eurofin's EAG Laboratories. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items for today's event. All attendees have been muted. However, we'd still love to hear from you during today's presentation. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the questions panel located in the bottom right of your screen. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. Dr. Jeff Wang, one of our senior material scientists, will be answering some of the questions during the presentation, and we will also collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. At the end of the webinar, a survey will pop up on your screen. Your feedback is greatly appreciated and will help us to improve our future events. I would now like to introduce our presenter, Dr. Zheng Tao Zhu, Senior Manager of TM Technology at Eurofins Nanolab Technologies. Thank you, Rina, for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. First, I would like to thank all of you to attend today's webinar. Uh, I will talk about multi-scale 2D and 3D investigations of lithium and battery electrodes. A little bit about myself. Uh, I'm the senior manager of TM Technology at Nanolab. My background is in material science and electron microscopy. Uh, I have more than 10 years experience in TM, including aberration corrected TM and uh, chemical analysis, EDX, and EOS. Uh, my, one of my main role here is to development of novel uh, new TM technologies for materials characterization. For today's webinar, I will first uh, start with introduction to Nanolab and talk about the European EAG laboratories. Then I will briefly talk about uh, the techniques available across our company. Uh, so-called smart chart. Then I will talk about lithium and battery characterization at a different scales. After that, I will focus on multi-techniques, uh, both include 2D analysis and 3D characterization. In the 2D uh, techniques, I will focus on uh, two scales. One is a millimeter to micron level. Uh, I will talk about broad beam and polish and SEM based technique. Then move to the uh, micron to nanometer scale, which is a TM based technique, including aberration corrected STEM, EDX, EOS, and a PED. Uh, for the 3D part, I will talk about uh, two types of tomography. One is at a micron level, is SEM based uh, FIB SEM tomography. And it's another is nanometer scale atomic atom probe tom uh, tomography, APT. Uh, about Nanolab, uh, we are founded in 2007 and headquartered in Milpitas, California. We are about 50 miles south of San Francisco and uh, was acquired by European in 2018. And now it's a part of EEG family. We are about 90 employees here, and half of us have advanced degree, and collectively, we have more than 400 years of experience in the industry. We provide service to a larger range of customers across the whole industry, like semiconductor equipment, semiconductor materials, automobile, battery, uh, data storage, LED, uh, consumer electronics, uh, bioscience and academia. We are ISO 9001 and 17025 certificate. Uh, we guarantee provide high quality data. We are well known with our fast turnaround service. We have a guaranteed service in, within hours or within the same day. And we also have standard turnaround time service like 1D, uh, 2D, or even 5D. Uh, surface. Uh, we also deal with a large of, uh, number of samples 
we have a really high capacity. Besides the engineering team, we also have a production control team. So this team deal with the customer inquiries and help the communication between engineers and customers. And this team also manages customer individual IP. We provide a large range of service, uh, but in the NanoLab, NanoLab, we are more focused on advanced microscopy and tomography. For the advanced microscopy, we have SEM, cross SEM, FAB SEM, and also we have the TEM uh, type of techniques like TEM, STEM, EDX use, and PED. So here it shows uh, several pictures of our instrument uh, within our lab. We have more than 10 cross uh, SEM, and we have uh, about 15 FAB SEM dual beam system. And we also have a cryogenic FAB, uh, which is uh, capable for some beam sensitive materials. Uh, currently at NANLA, we have six TEM. Uh, including one CS corrected, probe corrected uh, Titan system, which is able to do the chemical analysis uh, like EDX and EOS. And we also have a Titanite system, which is capable to provide the precision electron diffraction PED uh, capability. And we also have the LEAF 5000 XR to provide uh, 3D data. Uh, using atom probe tomography. Uh, NanoLab is a part of European EEG laboratories. EEG laboratories uh, have more than uh, 20 locations around seven uh, countries around the world. So we have more than 600 highly, highly educated employees and we provide more than 40 techniques. And we are working with like more than 4,000 clients in 50 countries. Here is uh, Mepitas is around uh, in the California here. So now let's look at uh, the techniques uh, available at uh, our lab. Uh, here is showing a smart chart. It's also uh, called a spectroscopy, microscopy, analytical resolution tool. Uh, this is a really a uh, handy too, for even every lab should have this because based on this chart, you can have an idea what type of, what the limit of the technique, what's the detection limit, and what's the analysis area for that technique. If uh, today we will focus on SEM based technique and STEM and uh, STEM EDX and EOS and atom probe tomography. So this chart, you can see the x-axis actually is, uh, is called spot size, but you can understand the range for that technique can analyze. Like the SEM EDX, you can go to like hundreds of nanometer to hundreds of micron. And uh, like STEM EDX and EOS, the resolution can push to uh, nanometer or sub uh, nanometer scale. And if we look at the y-axis, that is the detection range. Like the EDX and EOS, are, they can detect as low as a few atomic percent. But atom probe tomography, you can see the detection uh, limit is a reach to like tens of uh, parts per million. So now you know who we are and what techniques available uh, across our company. Let's look at uh, today's uh, topic, lithium and battery, and their characterization. Uh, it's not necessary to mention how important of lithium and batteries because we know it's very important. As a surface lab, we are more interested in about how to analyze the materials and how to analyze the battery. So if we look at the battery at different scale, we can clearly see their targets are different. And the technique to analyze the battery component are also different. Like for the cell scale, uh, apparently you cannot use TEM to understand the, the battery directly. So people usually do like uh, 
3D X-ray tomography is a good technique, which is also available at uh, EAG. Uh, this technique can provide you like the big dimension if you have some structure deformation or big defect. You can use this uh, X-ray tomography to see within the sample without uh, breaking the, the battery. And in most of the case, if you assemble the cell into different module or system, you have to measure their about the properties like the voltage, current, or temperature to understand what's going on inside the battery. So the thermal and electrochemical method is usually used. Uh, in today's webinar, we will focus on the a relatively small scale. Uh, we know for a normal cell, it have two electrodes in most of the case, like anode and cathode, and uh, have the separator inside. And the electrode is actually in most of the case is made out by many particles, and the particle can be as small as nanometer scale. And it's also reported that the electrode can be made out by single crystal. But in, in the end, all this uh, chemical reaction and how the battery work, how the lithium going in and going out the electrode is all start from atomic scale. So we really need to uh, push the tech, technical limit to understand what's going on at a high resolution. So that's why we need to introduce the stem and atom probe tomography if you want to get a, a detail about your specimen. So I will start with the 2D analysis technique uh, at a millimeter to a micron level. So in this part, I will talk about uh, broad beam polish and then move to SEM and FAB SEM and SEM EDX. So the reason we need to uh, broad beam polish is in, mass, in most of the case, if we want to use SEM to understand your materials, the first thing you want to get is to want a really a big area and flat surface because SEM is based on the, uh, you can do like the secondary electron uh, beam or is the backscatter images. So no matter what you want a flat surface. So this broad beam polish actually is a really ideal method for the battery materials. Because this is provides a really large area, and it also is relatively damage free for your materials. So at that lab, uh, we guarantee they're as wide as one millimeter and as deep as 0.7 millimeter. Get this beautiful area. So the way uh, this broadening polish work is actually the principle is pretty simple. The, you have a broad iron beam and use that iron beam to polish down the sample. So you can adjust the voltage, I mean the current of the, the beam, and also of course you can adjust the current to adjust the milling rate. So because the beam itself is a round beam, we need to put a rectangular a shield plate, it acts as a mask to block half of the beam. Then as the edge of the, the mask, you will get this flat surface. So this is much better and the area is much larger than normal FAB because FAB is, um, normal FAB use a gallium source. The read is pretty good, but is if you uh, want to get an area larger than hundreds of micron is pretty challenging, it's really time consuming. So once you gather, uh, okay, yeah, let, let, let's talk about a little bit uh, why this is very suitable for battery materials. Because the battery material, in most of the case, we don't want to use a mechanical polish. Mechanical polish can provide very good service in many other materials. But for the battery, you don't want to introduce the stress to the sample. And also the electrode, in many cases, you have the pores inside. If you use a mechanical polish, you will introduce the slurry, and slurry can fill out the pores, and that will give you the artifact to the image analysis. And also, 
because this field of view is really big, this is make it possible to get an accurate uh, secondary green size distribution. And also you can clearly see the arrangement of the, the grains, like some area, the number of the grains smaller and some areas very dense. And as I said, we can also determine the porosity uh, in, inside the electrode if we do a careful uh, image analysis. Uh, within the with the development of the SEM nowadays, the SEM resolution is also pushed to uh, the best resolution. I believe we can go like a uh, sub around nanometer scale. So that's really give make SEM also a really powerful technique to understand the like sample morphology, the size, and even uh, the structure uh, within the the electrode here. Like shown, showing here is the cast material. You can see a lot of grains get damaged and there are a lot of fragments. So, and we see in the secondary particle, you can see some crack here, here. So this is directly uh, relative to the performance of the battery. So this is, uh, we can see this is from some uh, charge discharge cycle the particles already got broken uh, so if you have a, a, a battery at different state yeah you can definitely use SEM to identify the the electrode material how it looks like so after we after we talk about SEM uh, in many cases uh, you also want to introduce the fit to do uh, another direction view about your target material. So the idea is to to introduce another gallium beam, focused iron beam to the SEM columns. So this is so-called a dual beam system. So you can mail the sample away uh, while you collect the images. So by doing that, you can get the, a lot of more information about the cross-section of your your uh, materials and at the same time we can also uh, have the edx detector that is uh, give us extra information of, like the composition analysis of the materials so here is uh, one example uh, we know the fib we we can do the site specific area so because we can identify we use the sem identify the target area and using the FIB to cut the exact location you want. So here is a, a cross section of the cross uh, paper cut. You can see detail, more details about the materials, like this is secondary uh, grains have a lot of primary green. Uh, we see like hundreds of nanometer or even less than 100 nanometer. So we can see how they got connected with each other and there are some pores here. And this particle actually is got broken and a lot of residue here. So yeah, basically the, the FAB SEM can give you another uh, information, another direction. And as a science, EDX is, can give us another information about the composition inside of the electrode. So here is showing a really a large scale, uh, like hundreds of micron level scale to identify what element inside the electrode. So here is, we, we see the anode and the cathode at the same time. The anode part we see is, is carbon, is graphite. And also we see like the, they have silicon. And it's covered with oxygen. So it can be silicon or silicon oxide. And for the cathode part, we have a lot of nickel here. And oxygen, so it's it's really a nickel rich uh, type of materials. So after we talk about the two D analysis at a millimeter to micron level, let's move to the uh, higher spatial scale and micron to nanometer scale. So this part, I will briefly talk about the sample prime using the FAB because this. 
2D analysis and mainly the TM based uh, technique. So we need to first uh, get a TM sample from the VIP. And then I will talk about the aberration corrected stem, which can provide structure and morphology uh, from micron to nanometer or even atomic scale. Then I will move to the EDX and uh, EOS. So both of them are perfect to identify the composition of the material from hundreds of nanometer to even nanometer scale. And also, uh, EOS can provide the chemical state of your metal inside the cathode. A uh, PED is a relatively new technique. It can provide the phase information and the green orientation within the your cathode or anode uh, electrode. All these techniques can uh, have uh, collect provided data from micron to nanometer scale. So FIB is a really uh, popular now to prepare DM samples. And also this is an ideal technique for the battery materials because it's cell specific. Uh, for those who are not familiar with the FIB uh, TM sample preparation, I want to go through with you because we are, NanoLab is really good at TM sample preparation. So the usually the first thing you need to find your target. Then you do a marker, like you can do, do a hole or using some fiducial pattern to make sure you are, you know where you are going, where you are milling. So then you deposit the metal strap. Or we can do even uh, SOP or PS, some other metals. So most of the people use the PT uh, deposit to cover the area of interest. And then we mill two big trains on the two sides of this uh, field of interest. Then we do the U cut and to make sure this uh, piece, we call them lamella, is free away from the substrate. Then we will introduce the tungsten needle. We try to transfer this lamella to a TM grid. So the way we do it, we introduce the needle and weld the lamella to the needle and cut this part to lose the lamella from the substrate completely. Then you move the needle with the lamella and weld the lamella on the a copper grade. Uh, you can also do a, a molly grade. Uh, then you melt, lose the metal with this part and to lose the lamella from the needle. From that, you can using the FIB to polish the lamella to a certain thickness for TM uh, analysis. So uh, the battery material is a pretty challenge for using FIB to prepare because in most of cases, their size are huge. So here it shows uh, several example we did. Uh, this is a commercial available lithium cobalt oxide particle. So you can see uh, even there's a primary particle, each green have the sub greens with different orientation. Yeah, I can see based on the contrast the difference. And this is the middle image is another case of the materials. Uh, you can see the secondary particle is very big. It's about like 10 micron. Even this is like a few micron level. And we can see a lot of detailed information. Like we have a lot of primary particle uh, and also have a crack here and some uh, broken uh, primary particle. And the red image is the uh, anode materials. You can see the uh, graphite structure and this is uh, 002 layers. And also this is, uh, we can do the diffraction to identify the structure. Uh, I see this is a beautiful uh, black spot from the 002 orientation. So yeah, once we get the TM sample, yeah, we can get an image. I want to introduce the aberration character stamp because uh, this is really the ab aberration character system really push down the limit and give a, a lot of useful information to understand the electrode. So 
TM in most cases, I have a well-known issue of part of aberration, spherical aberration, uh, because all the lens using inside the TM is a round magnetic lens. So a well-known phenomenon for this magnetic lens is uh, electron beam at a different uh, a distance away from the optical axis, actually they focus at different points. Uh, like the electron beam away from the optical axis, it focus uh, earlier compared to electron beam near the optical axis. So instead of gather a point beam, you always get a disk. So that makes the image is really blurry and to limit the spatial resolution. So in recent uh, 50 years, um, so people develop this uh, character, but is this character is not possible until the latest 10 years because uh, the computer uh, is set up. So the idea of the character is is actually very simple. It is to generate a negative aberration to correct the positive aberration. By doing that, we can get a, a relatively really beautiful small spot. And this is to make it possible to see uh, more detailed information about the structure. And by doing that, actually we can play with the, the detector of the stem and uh, we can get a more uh, useful information like uh, we can even get angular bright field uh, images which which can provide both uh, high atomic number elements and which can image both high atomic number heavy element and the light element at the same time so this is different from the old technique uh, called a hot up high angle angular dark field images we can only see the heavy element inside the images so here shows uh, some uh, example uh, using the AC stem. Uh, we have this uh, particle near this crack. And uh, if we look at more carefully, you can see near the crack area, this primary particle have this shell. And away from this crack, you can see this particle doesn't have this shell. So if we zoom in and we can see the shell have a different structure, compared to the core area. So if we look more carefully, uh, we can see the core area have this well uh, layered structure, and uh, this part of the surface area have another structure, we call the rock salt structure. So this is very uh, helpful to understand how your material is degraded with the cycles. Uh, AC stem also make it possible to identify the composition analysis locally. Um, we have, uh, at Nala, we have the most advanced EDX and EOS detector. So we have the chemist stem EDX, which you have a really high bright uh, electron source. And at the same time, we have the four windowless uh, SDD uh, detector. So this is really increase the X-ray collection efficiency and make it possible uh, in some perfect example, we can even get atomic resolution maps. And on the Titan system available at Nanolab, we also have the dual-use capability uh, with the faster shutter. So this dual-use uh, is really helpful for the battery material analysis because this do use uh, capability can double the normal use uh, collection energy range. So normal range is like 2K EV, but now we have a 4K EV. So within the 4K EV, we can identify most of the elements uh, within one spectrum. Uh, another advantage for the do use is we can always put zero loss peak within the data and the correct to calibrate all the peaks if there are any peak shift. You know the battery material have the metal uh, can be at a different chemical state and their energy edge can be changed slightly. So with with the zero loss peak within the data is really 
make sure their, sh their shape is from the chemical state chain. So here is showing one example of the EDX result of a secondary grain. So we can see clearly we, the EDX can provide light element as uh, light as like carbon, oxygen, no problem. And uh, heavy element, nickel, uh, no problem. Yeah, we can see there is a nickel rich material. And very interestingly, we can also see the phosphor and the fluorine near the crack. So this is uh, from the SEL layer. So EDX is able to provide a uh, light element, but some real light element like lithium, uh, in most of the case, you are not able to pick, it, pick up the lithium signal. So that's why we need to use the EOS. Uh, EOS uh, is a energy loss spectroscopy. So it's a really uh, advanced technique, but it's really powerful. So here is showing uh, several grains at a different location uh, within the secondary grain. Uh, one is from the core area. This uh, primary particle can see the lithium is, is covered the whole grain. Also at the surface, the intensity drops. Uh, for a grain near the crack, uh, in the shell area, actually lithium got disappeared. And for another grain, uh, this uh, green actually almost half of the lithium got uh, removed somehow. This is this is the result of from um, uh, degradation. You can see uh, in this black area the lithium peak disappeared. Uh, another powerful advantage for the lease for the eels is to we can identify the chemical state as I mentioned earlier. Uh, here showing one uh, grain as near the crack area. If we look at the EOS data from different location, we can clearly see at the surface area, this oxygen precay edge got disappeared. And if we look at the nickel uh, arrow three edge, you can see this, there's a chemical shape. At the surface, the nickel moved to a lower energy loss. And we can also do the uh, quantification and the quantification showing oxygen to nickel ratio drop at the surface. And combined with uh, the peak shift and also the, uh, the oxygen peak chain, uh, we can confirm the nickel actually changing from three plus into two plus. For another grain, uh, we, where we see uh, half of the lithium got dis disappeared, we can actually use the EOS to map out the different phase. So like here is a nickel in the nickel monoxide phase, uh, which is uh, well separated from the, the lithium nickel metal oxide. So the chemical state analysis I use of course can apply to any cast of materials uh, and any materials. Here we are showing another uh, example of this uh, lithium manganese oxide. So at a, this is really at a really high scale, uh, high spatial resolution. You can see the atoms arrangement layer by layers. So if we collect the use data from this point area, we can see the oxygen KS is changing, and the manganese L2 and 3 peak also changing. If we compare the surface and the core area within few nanometers, we can see the, the, the peak uh, position change, and also the L3 to L2, the ratio also change. You can see the surface the L2 peak drops. And the oxygen, you can also see the, the peaks are also very different. So based on this information, we can also confirm the manganese chemical state changing from a mixture of three to four plus and changing to a mixture of two and three plus at the surface. So we already talked about the AC stand and EDX EOS analysis. Now let's move to the, the phase identification using the electron diffraction. Uh, in a normal TEM, 
we use a parallel, parallel electron beam. In that case, we can get a diffraction pattern. But in many cases, this diffraction pattern doesn't match with the theoretical pattern because the electron energy is really high. We have the uh, artifact. So the way to avoid is uh, to solve this issue uh, is called the precession electron diffraction. The way to do it to kill the electron beam and precise along this conical surface. So by doing that, we will get a diffraction pattern and match the well with the theoretical result. And at the same time, you can see the field of view is much larger compared to a normal uh, PM electron diffraction. So by doing that, we can do our orientation and application more reliable. And also we can make the strain analysis possible and more accurate. So the way we do the precession electron diffraction is to, uh, of course, we have focus the beam and we scan the beam across the X and Y direction. At, at each point or each pixel, we have this uh, one uh, diffraction pattern. So the two, 2D plus 2D is the 4D data side. And from this uh, 4D data side, we can, as I said, we can compare the diffraction with the theoretical model, and we can get the green orientation mapping. And also, uh, we can uh, measure the distance of these black spots uh, compared to a uh, stream free area. Then we can get the stream analysis. This is also very useful to understand uh, your, your materials. So here showing one example about the cathode materials. So this is showing uh, PD can give a really good distribution about the phase. Like here is a lithium nickel metal oxide. We do see a nickel monoxide on the surface of this uh, secondary particle and also within uh, near the crack area. And also we can do the orientation map about the cathode active materials. And we all can also provide orientation map of, uh, of the nickel monoxide. We can always uh, zoom in uh, to get a, a higher resolution using the PED. Uh, even we can do a really large scale like tens of micron. Uh, here showing one particular uh, primary particle you can see the secondary phase, the nickel monoxide actually is on the surface. It's not a, a inside the grain. So that is the good news. Uh, even for one phase, like this primary particle of lithium nickel metal oxide, we can see there's uh, some uh, subgrain here because uh, different color showing the different orientation. And also it's very interesting to notice by that the, the nickel monoxide actually have the same orientation around this primary particle. Uh, you may wonder, uh, we can use the EBSD, which is SEM based technique, identify the green orientation, but PED definitely uh, provide a better spatial resolution. Like this uh, subtle surface, a few nanometer or tens of, tens of nanometer shell, you cannot really see it uh, using EBSD. So I already finished the, the 2D uh, techniques for the cathode analysis. Now let's move to the 3D analysis. Uh, let's start with the micron level. So uh, this is based the SEM based technique using the FIB tomography. So the idea is using the I already talked about is a fib cut, uh, cut of one particle, but actually with the development of software and instrument, we can use in the fib to do a multi-cut and so-called auto slice. So by doing that, we can have a lot of data set. Like you can determine how many slides do you want, and you can determine how big of the area you want. Then you can play with the data, get a video, 
And also you can do the 3D reconstruction, get the target or uh, which part you are interested in, you can get uh, the information you want. Here is showing the movie of the auto slice. You can see like this uh, cancer electrode. Uh, when we slice in, you can see uh, at some point you will see some void inside. That's not what we want. Uh, see, there's a void inside this uh, secondary particle. And also we see the crack we see in the secondary particle. So this is definitely very interesting uh, to understand your materials. And we can also uh, play with the data and get a 3D uh, structure and create a movie. Like here, the active material is, is in green and the blue is uh, the other part. So we can also take off the, the blue part to see the carbon banner. So you can see they are all connected to each other. So it's very interesting to understand uh, your material system. And of course, you can uh, see the 3D morphology of one single uh, particle to understand what, what's going on around it. And also, if you see some crack inside the second particle, you can always dig it out from the data and make this movie to see how it look like in 3D. So here you can see this crack actually is made of by three blades. So it definitely can give you uh, more information when you understand the behavior of your battery. So after the tomography at micron level, let's move to the nanometer scale. So this uh, is a very cool technique. It's called atom probe tomography. This technique is the only one material technique that can provide 3D uh, imaging or structure information at the same time as uh, a composition information at a nanometer or even some case at an atomic level. So the way it works is you need to make a needle-shaped uh, specimen from your bulk material. Then you cool down this needle to uh, cryogenic temperature, usually below 100 Kelvin. Then you apply a bias to this needle. So this uh, bears will make the will create a really high uh, local electrode field that is makes the atom ionized. So after that, you will apply a laser or another bare pulse. So that pulse will make the the, the ions evaporate away from this needle and reach this uh, detector, which is called a post, uh, position sensitive detector. By doing that, you can un identify the where the atom come from, where the ion come from. So the, the cool thing for atom probe tomography is you always evaporate ion one by one. So you can get the information of the X and Y of the ions and so based on sequence of the iron you can know the z information and of course we can record the time of flight so that is we can transfer that information into mass uh, charge to mass ratio to know what element inside the ion. so here showing one uh, example of this cancer particle so we made a needle from this uh, metal of this uh, secondary particle and then we made a needle shape materials you can see it's pretty long we in most of the case we can do the radius kind of, uh, within 100 nanometer but the z direction we can go as deep as a few hundred of nanometer so here showing the the data we got from that needle so we can see the lithium no problem, we can get even like a 50 ppm of lithium if inside your materials. And so uh, a needle, nickel and oxygen, uh, definitely we can see uh, the 3D structure. And also with the movie of lithium map, 
you can see if you have some interface or some uh, reach area, we can catch it up using Atom Pro tomography. So here is the summary. Uh, I talk about uh, 2D techniques and 3D techniques. For the 2D technique uh, at the micro level, I talk to the broad beam and polish, which is a great way to provide large area damage free surface. And SEM EDX can provide morphology composition analysis at a larger scale. And FIB is really great to, uh, to do a set of specific card. For the TM based technique, we can provide the crystal structure, morphology, and EDX EOS can give a lot of detailed information about the composition and even chemical state analysis. And the PED uh, can provide the crystalline phase and green orientation information. Uh, for the 3D techniques, uh, the FIB SEM tomography can give a large scale green size distribution and porosity and even some crack, we can see it. And atom probe tomography is can provide structure and composition analysis and nanometer scale. This is really good for light and trace elements. So this work uh, actually is a collaboration between different groups. Uh, I would like to acknowledge their harp, like Tina harped a lot on the broad beam polish and Sarah uh, on the auto slides, and Charlene's group uh, handled all the TM sample preparation, and Pretech is our atom probe scientist, is uh, give a lot of help on the data. And also I want to thank the FS and TM group, which is to make it possible to support this webinar. So before I went in today's webinar, I want to emphasize that uh, you need to choose the EAG, uh, EAG laboratories for your work. Uh, we are here to help you. And I'm not going to read the details, but we, I want to emphasize we treat the customer's IP uh, very carefully. And uh, we provide a multidisciplinary approach if you need uh, a lot of technique to understand your materials. And we are here ready to solve your materials or engineering relative product problem. So this webinar talk about a lot of techniques. Uh, if you are interested, you can uh, check online. We have the pre-recorded uh, video talking about SEM, EDX, Atom Pro, uh, TM, PD, and EDX and EOC analytical TM. You, yeah, you can. Feel free to watch it if you want to learn more about that. And also, we have uh, upcoming webinar scheduled next month, and you are also welcome to uh, join us. Uh, thank you very much.